In this video, we want to ask and answer the question, what is the dimension of the vector space R over Q? In other words, the vector space where the vectors are real numbers and the scalars are rational numbers. But first, we should define our terms. The dimension of a vector space is defined as being the number of vectors in a basis for that space. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we want to look at the vector space R3 over R. Well, in order to determine the number of vectors in a basis for this space, we will need to represent an arbitrary vector, the components of which we will call x, y, and z, in R3 by a linear combination of basis vectors. So, as you may be able to imagine, we will need one, two, three basis vectors in order to do this job. Let's take one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one. If I multiply x times the first vector, y times the second vector, and z times the third vector and add these together, then I have just such a linear combination that yields my arbitrary vector. In other words, we've shown that the dimension of R3 over R is, as one would suspect, 3. And in the same way, the dimension of R2 over R would of course be 2. Or more generally, the dimension of Rn over R would be n. But let's move a bit closer to what we are actually wanting to know. Let's take a look at R over R. Now since we could also write this as R1 over R, then we know, because of our general formula here, that this will be of degree or of dimension 1. But let's take a look at it anyway, so that we might start getting a feel for R over Q. So we'll take the basis vector 1, which I'll write in parentheses just so that we have in mind that that's a vector. And we again will choose a random, uh, an arbitrary vector of R, and we need to represent that as a linear combination of the basis vectors, which admittedly in this case is not very difficult since we only have one basis vector. So if I, I'm going to make this V. Uh, a little bold, just so that we know that that's a vector. So what scalar would I have to write here? Well, I guess I already wrote it, didn't I? It was a V. I would just have to take the same V here and uh, multiply that times 1, which would give me the vector V. So this V is a scalar and is a real number, so it comes from this set here. And this one is a vector and comes from this set here. Right? So, what does that mean now for R over Q? Can we somehow use this line of thinking for R over Q? So again, we would choose, let's call it W this time, an arbitrary vector in R, 
and have to represent that by a linear combination of the basis. Of course, we don't know what the basis is. We'll have to figure out what that would be. If we start with the first suspicion and think, well, maybe this is a basis. Maybe this is a basis. Maybe we can just use the same, same basis as before. So that's our question here. We'll see how that turns out. What if we said mm, w we're going to define as being the square root of 2? Right, so that's going to be our, our vector. We'll, we'll write that uh, bold again. We'll write these vectors in bold. That one too. So we have the square root of 2. And we're going to somehow want to write that as a linear combination of this basis vector. 1. Well, since this square root of 2 is an irrational number, the question would be, what rational number, because we're dealing with the rationals here, would I have to write here in order to multiply it by 1 and get square root of 2? Well, there's not going to be an answer to that question, right? That's not going to work. Multiplying 1 times a rational number is not going to give you an irrational number. So this is not going to work, right? This is not going to work. This is not a basis. But maybe we could just expand our basis to 1 and the square root of 2. Maybe that's a basis, let's say. Is that a basis with a question mark? So, in other words, could we use 1 and the square root of 2 to create linear combinations that would yield us any arbitrary vector in R? For example, let's say the square root of 3. Could I write any rational numbers here that would yield the square root of 3? Well, it turns out, no, that will not work. So this is also not a basis. Now you might think we're missing some some nice and famous irrational numbers like pi or e. So you might think this might be a basis. 1 and the square root of 2 and maybe we need the square root of 3 and maybe we need pi and maybe e. Is this a basis? Well, it turns out that's also not a basis. It turns out that you could add millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of millions of vectors to this list here and you would never ever get a basis for r over q. You would have to add infinitely many vectors to this basis to have a basis for r over q. In other words, the dimension of r over q is infinity. Or, stated as a theorem, the vector space r over q is of infinite dimension, a theorem that we will prove in the next video.